third scenario was very interesting to understand how to model a situation with no uh, storm event and another with the storm happening. So we could use the active topology alternative. The active topology alternative was helpful to create a situation where we, there is no catchments in the in the simulation. So this is an uh, interesting thing to do. So in the first scenario, we uh, let's say we turn it off the catchments. So we just use it the uh, is active attribute in the element. This attribute exists for all elements in this in the in the software. So there these two catchments it's not activated in the scenario. While if we jump to the second scenario, these two catchments are now alive. So in the first uh, in the first scenario we could see what happens in the system only with sanitary sewers. So at the manhole number five and manhole number one, we defined just the sanitary loads. We defined a pattern curve with a base flow applied, where this number will be will be is multiplied by this pattern curve. So in the manhole five, it's three cubic feet, and at the Maho number one, it's a four cubic feet per second. Just check the pattern curve. We can see that the peak flow occurs at uh, nine hours after the start, multiplying by 1.5, the base flow, and at the Maho diversion, we define it a control structure. The control structure is defined at the adjacent conduit. So in the conduit C06, we created a control structure at the start edge. It's a control structure uh, defined by this uh, tool. It's a tool that stores all the control structures called conduit, conduit control structures. In this case it's a wire, a side wire with three feet of length, three feet of length and a crystal elevation 311 feet. This uh, component it's uh, it's used by the Bellinger equation that computes the flow that goes along the control structure. So it's a, a control structure at the elevation 311. This uh, manhole, uh, this manhole's invert elevation is 310 feet. So um, we will have uh, overflows at the conduit six and seven just if the water grade line achieves high, a level higher than one feet above the element's invert elevation. So computing this uh, first scenario the dry weather scenario, just the sanitary loads. We could note uh, using graphs, so let, let's using the quick graph button, that at the conduit 6 there is no flow occurring, because at the node we can see the depth curve it almost achieve the one feet depth. 
so how the sanitary loads goes directly to the wastewater treatment plant. So in the second scenario, call it stormy day, we define it a storm event by a curve, a curve used, um, created by a SCS dimensionless curve. We define this storm event and then combine it with the sanitary loads. So as we see in the beginning, we activated this two catchments as this scenario. So together with the sanitary loads, we could run this scenario. For sure, we will have a overflow at the diversion node because we are, were almost achieving the limit of of one feet of depth, so combined with this storm event, we will have a, an extra load. So selecting the conduit six, we can check and see the amount of water that goes directly to the overflow outflow element. At the wastewater treatment plant, there is more loads too. We can compare what happened at the treatment plant, comparing these two scenarios, selecting at the series options. And then we can understand that until the storm event at 11 a.m., we have the same results. So when we have storm event, we have the overflows occurring in the system. Checking a profile, we have here three profiles. Selecting the highlight elements, we can, for example, run this profile that goes from the manhole number five, passing for the diversion and going directly to the treatment plant. So seeing dynamically what happens during the system. We can turn on the annotation labels. So we can see that at this point we have the diversion of nodes is where uh, we have the uh, control structure. So the pipes that goes at the treatment plant, it has a, a lower diameter than, than the upstream elements. So it is causing also a flow to back up into the diversion uh, chamber, contributing to to the overflows. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.